Hello and thanks for joining us. All this week on Arts 24, 30 years since the genocide against the Tutsis, we meet the artists rewriting Rwanda's future. We start with a trip to one of the East African country's top fashion houses, Motions, to meet the pioneering designer, Moses Turahiwa. And we speak to the renowned theatre director, Dorsey Ragamba, an artist who 30 years ago lost nearly his entire family in the genocide. He talks to us about his new book, remembering the people lost in the atrocity, and the arts festival he's created in Kigali to celebrate the new generation. This week marks the 30th anniversary of the Rwandan genocide against the Tutsis. Over the years, Rwandans have worked hard to define themselves by something other than suffering. Now one of the fastest growing economies in Africa, Kigali has reinvented itself. We've been to the capital to meet the creatives rewriting Rwanda's future. And in this report, I go to one of the country's top fashion houses in Kigali. Kigali has ambitions to become a style capital. I'm at one of Rwanda's top fashion houses, Motions. It was founded in 2015 by Moses Torahiwa. Rwanda fashion scene is very new. Since the 90s, we had only like one factory making the clothing. It was not uh, a culture at all. So I think it's on the rise where it can, it can be spotted as something new and it has a very bright future. Once a model, now designer, Moses Torahiwa is taking Rwanda's fashion scene to the next level. My clothes is inspired by the country's history through the beauty. I only see the beauty in Rwanda. There's a lot uh, that happened in Rwanda, but for me, I just take the positive. He's known for reimagining traditional Rwandan forms and cultural motives into contemporary pieces, like this sports jersey, revisited. So this is a look where we exploring like the, the basketballer in like a traditional wear, the Moshanana, but you have the concept of like the V oversized jersey wear, sport wear, into like a saltorio that is really heavy, but also uh, functional at the same time. Now we can also see like, uh, try to work here. How the, um, the movement is gonna be. From the Ivorian footballer Didier Drogba to the Nigerian writer Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, via the Trinidadian actor Winston Duke or the Spanish actress Rossi de Palma, his store in Kiovo, a chic neighborhood, has become essential for all the stars passing through Kigali. He enjoys working with local artists, like his friend, the poet and singer, Malaika. It's translating in the clothes as well, so I love it. He designed this outfit based on a poem she wrote for him about his love of Rwandan heritage. He wanted me to come up with a poem that really expresses his inspiration from home, from Rwanda, from Africa, and it's called My Ghetto Mansion. The poem is talking with pride about how we love the way we do things here. And how I wanted to translate that into something I'm creating. Talk to me a bit about these beads, why they're so important in your creations. The beadwork, it's uh, a good memory from like my parents, my mom and my aunt, because when I was growing up, they were playing a lot with these little elements. So that's why I have the beads intrication all over the collection. And even like on your Even head. my heart, <laughs> on my new heart. So when I was growing up, my mom and my aunt were surrounding me with a lot of beauty, craft, and that was inspiring me. So that's why I attribute it to Rwanda because it's my surrounding and some geometric motifs and some prints are also recognizable in the Rwandan heritage. And so the most inspirations come from like deconstructing and playing around with those elements because it's uh, what I have in my experience when growing up. Meticulous craftsmanship and detail. 
President Paul Kagame is also a fan of his designs, featuring the cultural aesthetics found in Rwanda. Rwandans really love the traditional imigongo design. People even use it on house designs. It's part of Rwandan culture. Breaking taboos and pushing the boundaries of what's accepted in his home country. Moses spent time in prison last year because he changed his gender on his passport. Gender fluidity is a central part of his creations. I'm also risk, uh, a risk taker. I take the risk to express um, everything that I'm feeling. The gender fluidity is important because uh, after I did my master's in Florence, I was realizing like a lot of gendered clothing. And I think coming back to Rwanda or to my continent, I realized that I wanted to like, of course, evolve the clothing that has been there for many years. My inspiration that are coming from fluid men, like my granddad, or my uh, ancestors were well, only dressed in drapes. Confronting taboos in his country, Moses is designing a new path. Each of his collections is applauded and a fashion show is planned in Paris in May. There we go, the inspiring Moses Torahirwa there. Next, the theatre director Dorsey Ragamba lost most of his family in the genocide against the Tutsis in Rwanda 30 years ago. In the years since, he's created numerous plays about the subject. The first was called Rwanda 94, 25 years ago. He spoke to Sonia Patricelli at his new arts festival in Kigali about his book, Hua Rwanda, published by Kalman Levy. I was a young adult at the time of the genocide, so I belonged to the generation that witnessed the violence, and art played an extremely important role in the healing process. A genocide isn't a crime like any other. It's an extremely complex crime, an ideological crime. Verbal violence precedes physical violence. After the genocide, you're in shock, and you have to begin by processing what happened to really understand, situating it. And for that, I needed to create these foundational works. There were also parallel stories included in the media. Often Africa is seen through a prism where one has the impression that all violence is a result of ancestral or tribal hate, and that works of art help to put a stop to that to really take the time to change people's perspective and to change the narrative and consider what truly happened. Dorsey, your new work is called Hewa Rwanda, Letters to the Missing. Who are these missing people? So the missing are all those people who are absent from our lives, with whom we grew up. Actually, they're not entirely missing. The use of the word here is debatable because they're in our memory. They're everywhere. And according to different belief systems, we may not see them, but they are here with us in a way. Our movements are also guided by their missing presence. And because we knew them, we can't imagine our lives without them. Here, they're the victims of the genocide. On April the 7th, 1994, the Presidential Guard shot your family dead. Why do you choose to express the unspeakable now? To do something. I'm alive by accident. It's just a coincidence that I wasn't home that day. It took me a long time to find the words because they're not obvious. I talk about that, about how it's unspeakable. I don't idealize literature. I don't believe that it can say everything. And yet we try. We try to share with others, but mostly for ourselves. I'm also a father. I should be able to tell my children the story of their grandparents, of their uncles, of their aunts. It's no easy exercise. 
But my book is not about the genocide. I didn't want to write a book about the genocide because there are many essays, witness accounts. It's more a book that questions family histories. This invisible pain that you write of keeps people from moving forward. Would you say that art helps you move forward? That's my crutch. Others have their own. One can also be in a state of shock, not knowing how to move forward, or moving forward and backwards at the same time. We don't always dare to learn how to share what makes us melancholic. So art may also allow us to express private thoughts as well. Uh, to explore what we otherwise cannot explore in life, be it through writing or theatre. As an actor, I believe it's something that's even more physical, something we take on, we make into something. I'm not saying it applies to everyone, but in my case, art helps me a lot. Playwright Dorsey Rigamba speaking to Sonia Patricelli in Kigali. Now, just before we go, the violence that devastated Rwanda and Burundi in the 90s left more than a million people dead and created many more refugees. One of them was Gail Fai, a French Rwandan rapper whose prize-winning novel and song Small Country, or Petit Pays, draws on his experience of being a schoolboy in Burundi during this period. It's been published in 30 countries worldwide since 2016, made into a film, and now it's being made into a graphic novel. We're going to leave you with some pictures from the book. Thanks for watching. Please check out the Arts 24 webpage for more Rwandan stories on France 24. Ça, je suis sûr. Ouais. 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 Ouais